On April 11, 1912, the RMS Titanic set sail from Ireland to New York on her maiden voyage across the North Atlantic. The world's largest and most luxurious ocean liner, the Titanic carried scores of wealthy, upper-crust American and British citizens, including five first-class passengers, unable to foresee the terrible fate and scandal awaiting them as survivors from the notorious lifeboat number one, which the press later called the Millionaire's Boat. The grand and opulent first-class restaurant located on D-Deck could seat 500 guests. Fine dining was such an important feature of the Titanic that the head chef's salary was second only to the ship's captain. On the fateful day of April 14th, Abraham Solomon, a well-to-do businessman, was enjoying his multi-course lunch and we believe befriended another first-class passenger, Isaac Frauenthal. Perhaps the two could meet after their arrival in New York. Frauenthal wrote his name and address on the back of Salomon's menu. The Titanic's luxurious Turkish baths included an ornately upholstered weighing chair located within the cooling room. Here is where Salomon likely found this ticket from the scale, on which he later noted the names of three first-class passengers who would figure in the ensuing tragedy that lay before them all. Sir Cosmo Duff Gordon, his wife Lucy, and her private secretary, Mabel Francatelli. At 11.40 p.m., the Titanic struck an iceberg that tore a gaping hole into its starboard side, prompting Captain Smith to order the lifeboats prepared for evacuation. At about 2 a.m., the ship broke in half and plunged into the freezing black water. Safely aboard lifeboat number one, Salomon, the Duff Gordons, and their secretary stared in horror and heard the screams of the drowning passengers fade into the starry night. How was it that a lifeboat designed to hold 40 people escaped with just five passengers and seven crewmen? What happened that terrible night? Was Duff Gordon's promise to pay each sailor five pounds an act of generosity? Or a bribe designed to steer the lifeboat away from victims who might inadvertently cause it to capsize? These events became the subject of a British inquiry and public condemnation. Six months later, Lady Duff Gordon's secretary, Mabel Francatelli, wrote to a fellow lifeboat passenger, Abraham Salomon, from New York's Plaza Hotel, about the British inquiry into Duff Gordon's actions on lifeboat number one. We do hope you have now quite recovered from the terrible experience. I'm afraid our nerves are still bad as we had such trouble and anxiety added to our already awful experience by the very unjust inquiry when we arrived in London. The Duff Gordons' lives were shattered forever. Cosmo, though cleared of any wrongdoing, was branded a coward and ended his life a recluse. On September 30th, 2015, Lionheart Autographs will auction these historic items from the RMS Titanic and 125 other important autographs. This is your once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to own three relics from the survivors of the notorious Lifeboat No. 1. To bid on these Titanic artifacts, visit Invaluable.com or eBayLiveAuctions.com. Mm -hmm.